Welcome to Reddit Aliens. What is the creepiest thing that happened to you personally that made you question reality? Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. I'm curious if anyone else has had this happen. Years ago, my then wife and I would run into the same woman everywhere we went. And I mean everywhere we went. This went on for about a year. Go to the grocery store, she would be there shopping. Starbucks, yep, sitting right behind us. Walking around the mall, she would pass us walking in the other direction. Movie theater, she'd be behind us in line getting popcorn. The creepiest encounter was while driving on the freeway. My wife looked at the car next to us and screamed. Yep, it was her. She was always alone, never talked to us, and always made eye contact. She had a very unique appearance. She was very tall, very thin, and had very tight skin on her face. It was so unusual that we joked that we were being studied by an alien. It was some serious glitch in the matrix stuff. It was years ago, when I was about 17. I had gotten home from school and wasn't feeling well, so I spent the rest of the day just lying on the couch. By about 8pm I was feeling even worse and decided I should just try and sleep whatever it is off so I go to my room and get in bed and pass out pretty quickly. I don't know how long I was asleep, but I suddenly woke up in my pitch black bedroom and all I could think was, I'm going to die right now. My body was so weak, the room was spinning and my body felt like it was on fire. I look over to the edge of my bed and sitting on the edge is my grandmother, who died just a few months ago. She pats my arm and says, it's going to be okay, just call for your dad, try it, call for your dad. So I start calling for him, and it felt like an eternity, but he finally bursts through my door and asks what's wrong. I look over, and my grandmother is gone. After that, he gets me up and takes me to the ER, where I have a fever of 106, which explains a lot. I had to get a ton of fluids and a shot in my hip, but I eventually felt okayish. Her being there felt so real, it was so weird. I know logically she wasn't, but it felt so real. That sort of messed with me a little. I loved her dearly, and her death was very sudden. We kept her ashes and a nice urn in the house under a painting she had done herself. When I got home and passed by, I said thanks to her. I knew it was the fever melting my brain, and maybe some sleep paralysis, but it still made me question the afterlife and those sort of things. It was a fever hallucination, but... It was your grandmother, and you lived. So embrace it. It's a miracle. When I was 12 or so, and still living at my parents' house, I woke up in the middle of the night to pee. I got to the bathroom and heard what sounded like a party going on downstairs. Laughter, music, the sound of glasses being knocked together for a toast, the whole shebang. I thought it was weird that my parents had friends over so late and hadn't told me, but I decided to go and see who was there opened the door to the kitchen, and the entire downstairs was completely dark and silent, not even a TV on. I was thoroughly confused by the strangeness of the situation, didn't really register, so I never told anyone. Years and years later, I mentioned this to my dad, and he said he had heard them too. Turns out, there used to be a small public bar in their home, which is over 150 years old. I guess some of the patrons decided to hang out for eternity. My cat hated me. For the first seven years we had him, probably longer. He was a feral that was tamed by my wife and only accepted affection from her. My wife assured me that this was common for ferals. Then one day he suddenly warmed up to me and wanted me to pet him. We've been best friends ever since. This was approximately four years ago, about the time that my wife's brain cancer was becoming aggressive, even before we were aware of it. She died two years ago. It's like he knew it was just going to be the two of us one day. Not me, but my grandfather. My grandfather had been in World War II and told us about when himself and a few other soldiers had been separated from his unit and were trying to get to Normandy. They had gone through a clearing in a wooded area but had to drop when they heard something approaching. They were on their bellies in low grass when they saw 20 or 30 German soldiers running across the clearing, clearly in a state of panic. Then they just froze in mid-step. He said they resembled statues, and that some weren't even touching the ground, and that there was no noise whatsoever. Even the birds had gone silent. After a few seconds came a loud noise like metal scraping on concrete, and the frozen soldiers started to become blurry to the point at which they vanished without a trace. This had been reported by all of the soldiers that were present, 
and all were called to the War Office in London after their return to the UK, where they were pressed on what they saw over the period of a few days, and were taken back to the same spot in France shortly after the war had ended. Surprisingly, when they got there, there were other men sharing the same accommodation who reported similar occurrences in the exact same area. They were all taken to the woods and had to describe where and how the events took place. My granddad had said that their entire area was guarded heavily and that part of the ground was heavily excavated. The strangest thing of all the others he said was that there were hundreds of dogs in the area just milling around for no apparent reason. They returned to the UK with a gag order, ordering them never to speak about any of this. He went back to the same spot in France before he died in 1985 and said that the area had been covered with unmarked warehouses and was guarded by an unusually professional security company. He reckoned they were military. I've tried to find out more about this, but can't find any records of it. But I do remember one of the guys who he was with that day. He used to come and visit sometimes, and referred to the place as the Splintered Woods. Now, that is a story I would love to hear more about. I've never heard of it before, but I'm going to look it up. Does anybody know anything about it? I can think of a few things that happened in my first year of college. I used to live in an apartment kind of place on campus with three other people. We all had our separate bedrooms, but shared a living space. It was on the seventh floor to give a better idea. Once I woke up at around 2 a.m. to find that my phone was automatically playing a song. I closed the app, but it happened two to three times again. I would have put down my phone being weird, but then one of my roommates told me the exact same thing happened to her as well. This wasn't all. A few days later, I woke up to a beeping sound coming from my phone, and when I checked, it was apparently a sound recording. The duration showed as 0.00, .00 though which meant that it shouldn't technically play at all. I deleted it immediately. Another time, my roommate and I were watching a movie and had stayed up till three. It ended and she went to sleep. After a few minutes, she burst into my room and asked me what I was doing. I was confused because I was just lying in bed reading. She said that she heard very weird noises from the window, which she assumed I was making to scare her or something. I went to her room and it sounded like heavy breathing or sighing. I told her it's just the wind. We opened the window and saw that the trees, etc. were completely still. I don't have the same phone, room, or roommates anymore, even though I still stay on campus. Not necessarily creepy, but definitely made me question reality. I used to work in a gas station. One regular customer was like night and day. One day he'd be soft spoken and shy, the next he'd be obnoxious. His cigarette preference also changed from day to day but he always came in the same work truck with the same guys at the same time of day. One day he walked in and went straight to the bathroom. A minute later, he walked in again and came to the counter. Twins. It took me eight months to realize they were twins, and not even identical twins either. They just looked really similar. I'm the type of person who keeps my bedroom door closed and locked it all the time, no matter what, even if I'm home alone. So like a year ago, it was 1am and I decided to get a glass of water before going to bed. After coming back in my room, I swore that I closed and locked my door. After about 30 minutes of me dozing in and out of sleep, I suddenly felt all the ambient noise completely dissipate and immediately got that something feels off feeling. I got up and saw that my door was wide open. It scared the shit out of me as I was home alone. I've just chalked it up to being a one-time mishap on my part. I was camping with my family on summer break when I was a kid. The first night we heard some rustling off in the distance, so my dad went to go check it out. He came back and said he found an old dirty sleeping bag with a bunch of trash around it. I took this as him implying that it could have been a camp that got ransacked by a curious bear. We'd heard movement in a tree line for the next couple nights and it scared the shit out of me. The last night we were there, I had a nightmare that a bear had made it into my tent and was licking and biting my feet. I woke up from the dream and shined my watch light into the dirt covered wrinkly face of an elderly man. He was sucking on my toes and he immediately exited my tent and took off right after we made eye contact. I still don't know if it was my imagination or not all these years later. I never told anyone and I have nightmares about it often. 
When I was a kid, between eight or nine, I used to wake up every night to headlights coming through my bedroom window. The lights would then stop and turn off, not as if a car drove by, but as if they were turned off. Then the long shadows of a man, as if it were looking through my window, would pass by and stop in front of my window. I would lay really still and pretend nothing happened, every night for months. Eventually I convinced myself it was my imagination. Now that I think back, it stopped when my stepdad moved in. My mom was single, but I was convinced it wasn't real. Across the street lived my best friend, whose mom was also single, and she refused to sleep in her bedroom. Her window faced my window. She told me years later it was because every night a man would park in her side yard and walk over to my yard. The long shadows were from the light in her yard. She eventually decided it was my dad checking on us and never told me until I was a teenager. It wasn't my dad, I asked him. So I thought I was crazy and hallucinating for years, and perhaps I wasn't, or two kids were having odd dreams at the same time every night. I was playing with our dog in the living room. At the time, I was around nine years old. We were doing our usual only play like this when mom isn't home, else she'll tell us to stop type of play. So basically playing fetch in the living room. At one point, I threw the toy which caused it to ricochet out of the living room into the kitchen. Franz, our dog's name, chased it and disappeared around the corner to get it. At the exact moment, the front door opened and mom walked in with Franz on a leash after a two-hour walk over the beach and dunes. I tried to explain, but can't. I played with him for at least 15 minutes, in apparently my imagination. But I just don't believe that. When I was 15, I was home alone, hanging out upstairs in my bedroom. At the time, we had two small dogs. I was sitting in my room watching TV when the dogs started going crazy barking downstairs. It wasn't uncommon for them to bark when a person walked by or came to the door, so I just stayed in my room and thought nothing of it at first. They kept barking nonstop for probably about 10 minutes before I finally got fed up and decided to go downstairs to tell them to stop it. The stairs in my house led into the kitchen. As soon as I reached the bottom, I saw him. A very tall man in a pea jacket and top hat stood in the doorway between my kitchen and dining room. I could see no face. I bolted back upstairs and locked myself in the bathroom where I called my parents. In the time I was waiting for them to come home, I began hearing several seemingly aggravated male voices outside the bathroom door. I was absolutely terrified. Eventually, my aunt arrived at my house to check on me. The voices faded, and I was able to calm down. About two years ago, I got a phone call from my mother, telling me she had been reading the local, very small town paper, and there was an article in it about my childhood home, written by the town historian. The house, built in 1805, had once been a local gathering spot for the elite of the small village. The first floor, now the kitchen, dining room, and living room, had once been a parlor, a tavern of sorts, while the second floor of the house functioned as a dance hall. Things in the house had been rearranged a bit, the staircase being one of those things, had been moved from what was now a second floor bedroom closet, which would exit downstairs between the kitchen and dining room. My family was slightly aware of this, but never had the exact details of it. Very cool, I thought, until my mom continued reading. In 1836, there was an accident. Three men got into an argument about their differing political views, two of them against the other. The disagreement ended with the third man being pushed over the railing at the top of the stairs, landing at the base of the stairs, where he slowly suffered from and eventually succumbed to his injuries. The spot where he died was the exact spot I had seen the faceless man in the top hat almost 15 years ago. My mom clipped the news article and my father framed it and hung it in the dining room, right near the doorway into the kitchen. An hour later, while my father was home alone, he heard a crash. Upon investigation, he found the clipped article in its shattered frame laying face down 15 feet from where he had hung it. I always knew what I had seen and heard was supernatural. Now you'll never convince me otherwise. You'll also never convince me to stay in that house alone again. I worked at a small retail shop that sold mostly small accessories and clothes. I have never really believed in ghosts, but my coworkers always swore the place was haunted. Lights would flicker randomly and canvases would fall violently to the ground despite my efforts of propping them up so that they didn't. 
The thing that really made me question everything happened when I was closing alone at night. We had a sunglass display in the middle of the store, just a flat glass shelf with a bunch of sunglasses laid out nicely on top. I walk past it to the register and hear this huge crash. Look back and all of the sunglasses were on the floor. It looked like somebody just took their arm and dragged it across the shelf, pushing them all off. There wasn't anything above the display, so nothing could have knocked it off. I don't have an explanation for it. It was right as I was about to close, too. He was a rude ghost. I dreamt it was dark, raining, and I was in the woods walking towards a campfire. There were three men around it whom I had never seen before. One was wearing a shirt and pants with huge white and black horizontal stripes on it, such as a prisoner white wear. I could not figure out why I was not scared in my dream. Fast forward 10 months later. We're hunting and camping. A friend brings along three of his friends that we had never met before. I have to go to the bathroom, buried a 50-gallon drum and put a seat on it. And my husband walks with me since it's dark. We start back and it starts to rain. We get to the clearing and there is three friends around the fire, one wearing the outfit described above. I wasn't afraid of my dream because my husband was behind me and I just couldn't see him. No one believes me. Well, a sudden bout of deja vu doesn't have to be written off that easily. I mean, it's possible for sure. Yeah, I believe it. I constantly had dreams of a red-haired kid in my dad's childhood home. It was my paternal grandparents and all my dad's sisters who lived there never had this ghost. No one believed me when I talked about this kid. He began to play in the bathroom with me because he loved to play in water in my dreams and it was downstairs so the adults wouldn't hear the water running. We moved out thinking this imaginary friend was a scream for help or that to my very superstitious parents a ghost was contacting me. I recall an incident where I woke up in the bathtub with the water running one night and moving out three days later. My dad's cousin moved in and their children also talked about it. Mystery ginger kid with blue overalls and green shirt, socks only and horribly stained throughout. I had never met these kids before at that point but I instantly loved them for backing up my story of the ghost kid. To the rest of the family, I was being bratty because I was no longer the only child. The weird part was that the kid inhabited the kitchen. He inhabited the bathroom and backyard in my dreams and constantly asked for food, whereas he only liked to splash water in mine. My dad's cousin had the house blessed by the local priest when the morning one or two of the five kids would be seen covered in food stains or dead asleep on the kitchen floor surrounded by half-eaten food. A therapist explained it as a shared psychosis, but it doesn't explain my own version of the kid and his fascination with food for the other children. So I'm a diehard atheist, but I can't fully explain this one. I have a big family, like really big. Last count, I had around 20 cousins. One day, we were all hanging out in the family farm and decided to spend the night. We just did girls in a room and boys in another and everything was going fine. It was around 4 in the morning when I woke up to one of my cousins standing by the door. The hallway light was on and shining on my face so I could only see his outline but I knew it was Josh. I asked him what he was doing and if he needed something but he didn't move and my eyes were starting to adjust. I could see more detail but I couldn't see his face. I was really sleepy and confused. When the hallway light, Josh's shape, everything disappeared. It was just darkness and an open door. I knew I was awake because I was sitting down. I decided to get one of my roommate cousins up and go check on the boys. Josh had an allergy to something. He didn't want to bother anyone so he took a Benadryl and went to bed. When I checked on him, he wasn't breathing. We got my uncle up, he gave Josh some heavy duty medication and we took him to a hospital. Everyone was fine. Josh told me he knew I was an insomniac and while he was suffocating unable to make a noise, he kept praying I couldn't sleep and decided to check on him.